So goodbye to Tang Mo and its cows. I waved my arm when I was walking up from uh, uh, Tang Mo and that man pulled over with his uh, scooter with a box of produce on the back, offered me to get on. I told him where I was going in the first place and he says, get on, we get up here and I pull out some money and he would laugh, but he would have been offended if I'd have forced it on him. And he was just doing it as a favor. What a nice gesture that was. When your consumer rights have been infringed, please dial one, two, three, one, five. I thought this was a tomato, but instead this is that, uh, whatever it was that I saw growing on a tree and then squished one with my foot. It's not a tomato, it just looks like one. And the way I eat it is to just suck the inside out, which is like a fluid, and it seems like there's um, nodules of, um, of a, um, how can I say this nicely, mucus like, um, like the inside of a grape actually, a very ripe grape. Okay, this is interesting. Notice the tourist. But here's the one that's interesting. Be a civilized tourist. No spitting, no littering. Even now, I can clearly recall reading this note about spitting because, sadly, one of the cultural attributes of China that I most remember and dislike was the fact that people spit everywhere. On the sidewalk, on the buses, etc. period. I often thought that China was so ripe for an incredible pandemic simply because of the spreading of disease by spitting. Okay, where I'm now is Qiangku Architecture Museum. 22 original structures from around the region. Reconstructed including a rent collector's house, an opera stage, a private school attached to a residence. No charge to get in. So right now I'm down at the uh, bottom right hand corner as you can see location. Toilets are off to the left. There's apparently to my left a main drag that goes down through there. And then on the way back if I can remember opposite uh, Pei Ben's residence, Cheng Pei Ben. Um, I take that road there and come back this way. that exit. It'll probably tell me that. The similar depth and width of the building make it look like an official seal symbol uh, of the official residence. Six sky wells are opening courtyards, 16 rooms separately on the first and second floor. Brick and worth carvings are made vividly and exquisitely. The main patterns are a bat and magpie, symbolizing one's expectation of passing the imperial exam and becoming an official. So built just after our civil war began. Apparently it's either set up to show how uh, banquets could be given for friends or it is used for that purpose occasionally. These carved out uh, panels probably provided ventilation for the rooms, uh, allowing heat to rise up and out, although the rooms are probably pretty high. In the old days, this was probably all wood rather than painted wood. A couple of uh, birds that don't look like my magpies, nor the ones I've seen in China. I'm looking for the bat and magpie motif, but I don't see it. Looks like a deer there. Here the lion and some kind of figure above it. Still in search of the magpie. Okay, this is a Qing Dynasty building. And it has large stone drums at the entrance, these. These are apparently supposed to be fish-like uh, in design. And they reflect that one is 
superior to its other uh, people. I'm not sure if it means you are or you should be aspiring to that or both. Hong's residence built the 23rd year around 1897. So this was a commoner's residence. I'm still guessing that a commoner in that vernacular would be like a sub-noble or lower end of the nobility because this is a substantial structure. Notice the little windows and the kind of water protection for those. Vignettes perhaps of commoners' life. I would guess him to be no slouch of a commoner. It's hard to see where the quality of this house leaves off and the higher levels begin, if at all. This motif looks fairly consistent uh, dra uh, in a uh, lion, but I don't know what that is above it, if it's a creature or not. Might be uh, something to do with a dragon, but can't be sure. This gives us the size of these rooms, not very large, probably 10 to 12 by about eight maybe. But there's what's interesting. Remember I've been looking at these side doors that open when you come back along the sides of the uh, middle section of the house and wondering what those doors were for and what that section that was recessed back in in this other room in the middle would be for at the back. And what it's for is the stairs. Gave you access to that second floor. Duh! So the rooms were modest, but certainly serviceable. They would be today, more so today in the United States, when people really don't need the gargantuan homes they have. Here are this very subtle rain catchment device. And notice they've <laughs> covered it up, the drain holes, with these uh, supporting posts and gutters. Although actually, that's a gutter drain pipe. So they are serving their function better than perhaps before. <laughs> it's amazing that they moved all these large structures. It's a great uh, thing for the heritage of China in this area, for sure. As I pan around very quickly, you get a sense of the magnitude of the job uh, of transporting buildings of this size here and then reconstructing them. Built sometime between the 1820s and the 1850s. This man made a great fortune, as I'm sure all of them did that have homes of this dimension. The lion indicates the power of the man, and uh, the grapes, apparently part of the motif, even if I can't make them out, uh, symbolizes his expectation and hope for prosperity for future generations. And the interpretive sign remarks on the great size of this central beam. Imagine this wood when it was fresh in color and perhaps polished and oiled. Like some of the relatively new chairs we've seen. Okay, I've entered the rent collecting house. So looking down this building, um, it's long because that facilitated the um, collection of rent as well as the storage and drying of the grains apparently. And that was rent from tenant farmers. These were for the tethering of animals, whether it was animals of those paying rent or uh, maybe stock given in lieu of cash rent, I don't know. 
Throughout Chinese history, it was often the collecting of rents that precipitated the downfall of dynasties because they got too avaricious and uh, the people revolted. Here's some more items we've seen before. Here we can see how this device, the paddles in the bottom there, particularly if they're designed tightly to fit that uh, channel, can move grain or water, whatever it was, to wherever it's moving it. This is the only one in existence in this region of China. Perhaps those were the collection windows. This looks like an actual well. The stone looks new, but there's a water down there suggesting it was. And this rent collecting house, it's interesting that this is a little angular jog of this end of the building. Perhaps it was an add-on. Here it points out the exquisite detail of the carving. Probably a, a way of saying to anybody approaching it, this man has some heavy bucks. We like sticking an original Van Gogh on the front door. Here is where the stairway is on this building. And this a much smaller, tighter um, front um, open area. Consistent with that is much simpler carving. The beams being much smaller and simpler. But this is rather novel, this approach into an upper section. Wow. And providing a different kind of interior courtyard area. You can imagine a mother down here hollering up, Jen, get out of bed. <laughs> What's interesting is the rooms don't have any, at least the downstairs, any exterior light. Pan across the front entrance courtyard of this simple house, relatively simple. Um, reflect that it may have had statues, urns, flowered plants furniture. And again, going out the side door and coming down this from this elevated second floor um, into another room area and another little courtyard. Perhaps for sure plants grew there. But with the benches facing that way towards the walls, don't you just imagine the walls were beautifully painted. This is a great angle for sitting also. Putting my hand up here so we've got some way to evaluate the dimensions of this thing. Here with my two fingers pressed flat to the wood. And my guess is, since I see no further buildings to explore, that this pretty little rock sign is trying to tell me something. There are a pretty old bridge off in the distance. Probably still used by the locals on that new road going up into the hills. It's roads like that that make transportation that much easier for the local farmers and it contributes that much more to the fluidity and the growth of the economy. I just left uh, that area but something more keeps drawing me just outside. Oh, it's the Yingshu Bridge. <laughs>